In this video, we will be discussing Mosaic's layouts. Layouts provide an important part of Mosaic because they're where our fixtures will actually be placed. Mosaic Designer 2 gives you the ability to create as many layouts as you want and organize and display your fixtures in whatever order makes sense to you as a programmer. Across the top of our layout screen, we have options for new layouts, deleting layouts, managing our layouts, setting our properties for our layouts, zoom and fit commands, highlight, and then our help, undo, and menu as always. Down the right hand side, we have our fixtures. We'll talk about that in a later video. To create a new layout, click the new layout button in the top left. You can also use the keyboard shortcut, control N. A new layout will be created and placed along the layout tab bar at the top. It's prompting me to give it a name, so I'll call it main. At any point, I can double click on a layout name to change its name. So if I want to change my layout one to be the cafe, I can double click and type in cafe. If I want to rearrange the order of my layouts, I can click and drag and move them to their new locations. At any point, I can close a layout. Now this doesn't delete the layout, it just hides it. To get it back, I go to my Manage tab and I have my options displayed for me. I can double click to bring it back. Once I have multiple layouts, this Management tab becomes very useful. Clicking on Manage allows me to see all of them, delete, duplicate, or set their properties, or open them. If I right click on any tab, I have the option to close other tabs or close all tabs. If I close my other tabs and then go back to my management, I can select them in whatever order and only display the ones that I want to work on right now. This provides me with a great way of organizing what data I'm currently working with. Once I'm in a layout, I have the option to set its properties. To do this, select properties at the top and I have the ability to again change its name, set its width and height, import a background image, set color for background and grid, grid spacing, subdivisions, and whether or not I see my grid and I can snap to my grid. To set a background image, I can click on the folder and browse to an image file of my choice. Once I select an image, it will import it in and set as the background. This is very useful if you want to import reflected ceiling plans or designer magic sheets. Once I import it, I have the option to then resize the image or resize the layout to fit the image. This is done inside of Properties. I have the option to change the background mode of the image to fit, fill, or stretch. Or if I click this button up top, I can snap the size of my layout to the size of the background image. Once I've done that, I can then zoom out to see all of my layout. Every layout has the option to have a different background image or color, which can greatly help in the organization of your layouts. Once you've created all of the layouts that you want to work with, we're ready to start adding fixtures. But remember, you can always add layouts in later.